go electric here. Today is Sunday, August 31st, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. After revealing the camouflaged version back at the Goodwood Festival of Speed with former Top Gear host Richard Hammond, Porsche has finally unveiled details about its 2026 Cayenne Electric, the brand's second all-electric SUV set to debut later this year. Built on the 800-volt PPE platform shared with its sibling, the Macan EV, the Cayenne EV includes some notable differences. The model will feature a 113 kilowatt hour battery pack offering an estimated range of over 370 miles on Europe's optimistic WLTP testing standard. The SUV supports up to 400 kilowatt fast charging, achieving a 10 to 80% charge in just 16 minutes. It will come with a North American charging system port for access to the Tesla supercharging network. To note, most superchargers can deliver up to 250 kilowatts, but the fourth and newest version of their dispensers are soon to be paired with power cabinets that can enable 500 kilowatt fast charging speeds at up to 1,000 volts. The Cayenne Electric will also offer single-speed, dual-in-house produced motors with a version that delivers 1,000 horsepower, with a 0 to 60 mile per hour sprint and in under three seconds. The vehicle will be equipped with Porsche's active ride suspension and includes active aero blades to enhance efficiency and improve the drag coefficient to 0.25. It will also have an optional rear steering system with up to five degrees and boasts a towing capacity of over 7,000 pounds. It will also continue to offer features to enable off-road capabilities. There is limited information about the interior, but it's said to include a curved touchscreen and augmented reality head-up display. The Cayenne Electric will also have the Porsche Electric Sound System, which is essentially an electronic version of an exhaust note. Porsche plans to produce the Cayenne Electric alongside gas and hybrid variants into the 2030s, with U.S. deliveries expected in mid-2026. The vehicle will debut later this fall at an event on the West Coast, according to CEO Oliver Bloom. My guess is that we'll see it at the LA Auto Show, which kicks off on November 21st. The all-electric Macan was Porsche's best-selling model globally in the first half of 2025, with nearly one in four Porsches sold being electric. The Cayenne has been the second best-selling model behind the Macan for the last several years. Do you think the electric variant will take the top sales spot with its smaller sibling. Porsche was also in the news this week for abandoning plans to expand the production of high-performance batteries with their wholly owned subsidiary Cell Force Group. Instead, they will focus on research and development activities for its high-performance cells with their parent company Volkswagen's battery subsidiary PowerCo in order to realign their resources. CEO Oliver Bloom said, due to challenging conditions, particularly in our main markets of the USA and the not yet developed Chinese electric luxury segment, we are reorganizing our battery activities and focusing on cell and system development. For volume reasons and a lack of economies of scale, Porsche is no longer pursuing its own production of battery cells. Electromobility will remain an essential drive technology for our sports cars in the future. Consolidating battery advancements under the parent company's subsidiary seems like a smart financial move considering Porsche reported a major decline in operating profit and revenue in the first half of this year. Hopefully these types of maneuvers will turn Porsche around and keep the company healthy while still producing more compelling electric models to come. I know some equipment that would be able to charge up that new Porsche Cayenne. Back in May, EV charging solutions provider ChargePoint and Eaton, an intelligent power management company, announced they would be collaborating to deploy products which can leverage vehicle-to-grid technology. This week, they have announced the launch of their first joint product, the ChargePoint Express Grid. The ChargePoint Express Grid integrates ChargePoint's advanced chargers with Eaton's end-to-end -end electrical solutions, which the company says offers a modular design which reduces capital expenditure and footprint by 30% while cutting operational costs by up to 30% compared to the solutions they currently provide. One way they're able to do this is through prefabricated units on concrete slabs, similar to how Tesla produces their supercharger stations. The Express Grid is a DC fast charging solution that includes vehicle to everything, or V2X capability, that delivers up to 600 kilowatts for passenger EVs and nearly four megawatt charging for commercial fleets. This is the highest power charging capability for V2X that we have seen before. 
With V2X capabilities, the system enables EVs to supply power to homes, buildings, or the grid, aiming to enhance energy resilience and reduce fueling costs for fleets. Notably, this equipment can reach these speeds because of the option for a DC to DC converter that connects directly to a microgrid for more power delivery while improving efficiency. The company says the units will be installed in conjunction with participating utilities that will be able to handle the load. The ChargePoint Express Grid is available to order now, with delivery starting in the second half of 2026 across North America and Europe. The system will be on display at the RePlus Clean Energy Trade Show in Las Vegas from September 8th to 11th. For our northern neighbors in Canada, more DC fast charging is on the way, and it will be paired with a cup of coffee and some Timbits. Canadian coffee and donut shop Tim Hortons has partnered with Canadian EV charging provider and network operator Flow Charging to deploy DC fast chargers at 100 Tim's locations across Canada. The first Flow Ultra chargers are already operational at a Tim Hortons in Regina, Saskatchewan. Up to 13 additional locations are slated for chargers by the end of 2025, with 50 targeted by 2026. All 100 locations will have equipment installed by 2028 and would make Timmy Ho's the largest restaurant provider of public EV fast charging in Canada. Sites will feature an average of four charging ports and the Flow Ultra chargers can provide up to 320 kilowatts of total power through its dual connector layout with either CCS or NAX compatibility. The new installations are part of Flow's partnership with the Canada Infrastructure Bank, which committed $235 million to Flow, bringing more than 1,900 public fast charging ports online across Canada. Back in July, Flow announced the closure of one of its Quebec-based assembly plants and laid off 80 staff across North America, but their manufacturing facility and offices in Auburn Hills, Michigan that were established in 2022 are still operational. I have personally charged at Flow's DC fast charging dispensers and have been pleased with the performance and reliability each time. It's great to hear that they are continuing to bring more dispensers with these characteristics to more EV drivers. As a self-proclaimed honorary Canadian and longtime Tim Hortons fan, I approve this announcement. If you've been considering an electric motorcycle, I highly recommend it. This is a good week for big discounts. Harley Davidson's electric motorcycle brand spinoff, Livewire, has launched a twist and go promotion on its S2 lineup from August 28th to October 31st. The initiative slashes prices by up to $6,250, making Livewire's electric motorcycles much more attainable. The S2 Del Mar sees the largest discount, dropping from $16,249 to $9,999, a $6,200 $150 reduction. The S2 Mulholland is reduced by $5,500, bringing its price from $16,499 to $10,999. The S2 Alpinista, the newest model, gets a $4,000 cut, lowering the MSRP from $15,999 to $11,999. Alongside the price cuts, Livewire announced a free software update for all S2 models, adding reverse mode and roll forward regenerative braking to enhance the rider experience. These promotional prices exclude taxes, title, licensing, and additional dealer fees. The latter can be a significant obstacle. Let me explain. When I was in the market to purchase an electric motorcycle, I took the S2 Del Mar and S2 Mulholland for a test ride at my local Harley Davidson dealership in Michigan. I really liked the bike, so I asked for the lowest out the door pricing. It was listed for about $16,000, but the total price came in over $19,000, including $2,000 of unspecified dealer fees. That was without state registration. The lack of pricing transparency was enough to lose me as a buyer, and instead, I was able to find a more powerful and longer range brand new Zero DSRX for a transparent out the door price of $14,000. Producer Tim also bought a brand new, nearly identical DSRX from a dealership this summer for only $11,000 out the door. Have you had a similar experience with a motorcycle dealership? If any of you look into buying a Livewire S2 series on this promotion, please share your real world experience in the comments section. I'd like to bring some positive attention to the good dealerships and see some more electric motorcycles out on the road. 
These have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you subscribe and share this video online. If you'd like to keep the current independent and keep it coming weekly, there's a thanks button below where you can make a contribution, large or small. We appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.